to business and do some reviews. Disney feature length films, short cartoons. We bought VHS tapes, every title we could. Disney is our business, and business is good. This is Let's Get Down to Business, and our episode this week is The Black Cauldron. <laughs> is that your impersonation of the Horned King? I fucking wish it was. Yeah. I wish it, I wish I was John Hurt. John, who is John Hurt? He's a fucking legit-ass old actor. Okay. He's been in a lot of things. Okay. That's all you need to know. Uh, if you didn't understand what Kevin just said... Then you need to fucking play it back again, because I was pretty clear... <laughs> This is Let's Get Down to Business with Stephanie and Kevin. Yeah. I come first. <laughs> um, yeah, you do. <laughs> this is a Disney podcast. <laughs> we are married for now. And we're going to discuss some I feel like we're going to be married animation. for a while longer. We've gotten through 32 weeks of this. 32. It's been longer than oh, that. Okay. Well, because if you figure the times in between, we had to take a week off. It's I been guess. longer. Yeah, exactly. That's more than half a year. Yeah. <laughs> It's been a good run. If we can survive this shit, we can survive anything. Anything. We're getting to the good stuff, boys. Is that now? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but first, a short. <laughs> we have Silly Symphony, yeah, if Winter. You, if you thought we were done with these, we are not. Oh, there's so much more. Yeah. There's so many more, babe. This one came out in 1930 and is approximately seven, seven minutes. minutes. Not like 702 or 657? Nope. Wow, cool. Approximately seven <laughs> minutes. So this one, well, they have a series of season shorts. So this is the last one, mm -hmm. I believe, in that four-season entry. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. Yep. <laughs> well, you would think... We're releasing them out of order. Uh, you would think they'd end with spring. Why? Yeah, on a positive note. Oh, fuck that shit, man. <laughs> winter. So winter starts off, we have a little jingle bells playing there mm -hmm. in the background. We have some howling winds, some snow, some hibernation. You know, all the good stuff. Yeah. Winter. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's another black and white short mm -hmm. of some animals being cute and dancing. Yeah. And it's, all, it's all musical. It's a silly symphony. Yeah. <laughs> there's uh, nothing really that stands out about it. There's a couple no. of funny gags. Yeah. But. There's some deer that skate on an icy pond. The groundhog. They, they, uh, all the animals come to him to see yeah. if they're going to get more winter or not. Mr. If Mr. Groundhog. See, if he's going to see a shadow. Mr. Groundhog, weather prophet. <laughs> weather prophet. That's what his, uh, yeah. so sign says on his door. I thought the moose were kind of funny. Yeah. So there's some, some good stuff in there, but overall, it's just more of the same. Yeah, it's just another silly symphony. Yeah. I, I'll echo the same stuff that I said before. I have appreciation for this because it's 1930 and it's black and white. And I'm always pretty impressed when you can do something without any vocals. So, I mean, just having the music and the dancing and the choreography is cool. I think what's difficult with me when for me when reviewing these is that there's no story yeah. or plot to them. So it's like, yep, some dancing animals yeah. and some music. That's about it. <laughs> I mean, there's not really anything. So when you can get the funny gags or the little stuff like the groundhog, that's funny yeah. and, and it breaks it up. But yeah, otherwise it's kind of monotonous. Yeah. So, Tilly Symphony, Winter, if you like those old, uh, like vintage mm -hmm. shorts, check it out, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I think I'm over them by now. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> This week, we... We're here. We're here, boys. We got to the good shit of the fucking... This is what you've been waiting for this entire time. The Black Motherfucking Cauldron! Right? Right? Is that is that what it was? Oh, no. That's like a couple more. All right. <laughs> what are you going on about? Like, we're to the good movies now. Like, yeah. the start of the good movies, which is the Black Cauldron, right? That's that's why people talk about this, isn't it? Yeah. Something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> The Fucking, Black Cauldron. It's a classic. It's so Oscar, metal. Oscar winner brought Disney back. Let's talk about... Didn't bankrupt them at all. Let's talk about what was happening. Because this came out... This was released in theaters in 1985. And I was finally born, you guys. So... <laughs> I, mean, that's I wasn't cool. yet. Yeah. I wasn't even conceived yet. Yeah, the world was uh, as it was supposed to be. Kevin's here. So we have Star Wars. Yeah. Well, it's, that... No, Star Wars has been around since the other movies. This yes. is after Return of the Jedi. Yes, but it's still an influence. Yeah. We have well, absolutely, yeah. In Japan, Nausicaa. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Na- Naushka. Naushka. <laughs> We have heavy metal is a thing now, mm-hmm. not not the musical genre like the the comic books and the magazine. Although heavy metal is kind of like playing a part in a oh, absolutely in, in the scene, like yeah. like in the what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's influence, but it's it's in the ether. Yeah. Are you are you talking about like the uh, the style? Yeah, I yeah. Don't know. The themes. Yeah, the themes. So yeah, so we have that. We have the Care Bears movie that just came out, uh, Back to the Future, E.T., yeah. but mostly... Well, I, don't, I don't see what Back to the Future has to do with it. But. No, I'm just saying what came out this time. Yeah. But influence, like, like style-wise, you know, you have, like, the um, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Have we checked to see if, Lord uh, of the Rings. If, if Willow had come out yet, or was that later in the 80s? Willow and, I'm, and also the Tom Cruise movie Legend as a Ridley Scott flick. Willow was 1988, so okay. that was... Bo- after this. Long after And what that. was the other one? Uh, Legend. 1985. Yeah, so Legend came out the exact same year, and it is a uh, Tom Cruise movie directed by Ridley Scott. Has uh, Tim Curry is the villain in it. Mia Sarah's in it. And it's it's panned. It's one of Ridley Scott's worst movies. But to focus in on, like, style-wise animation, what's going on, okay? Yeah, we- Vam- Vampire Hunter D. Which, was I, released in which I've seen. Yeah. So I don't know why. Yeah, if you're a horrible anime fucking... Connoisseur. I think it's an ex boyfriend made me watch that. Probably. Um, he Man and She Ra, there's a movie. Was the last unicorn around this time? I believe so. And you said something about like rock, rock something. I can't remember what it was called. Oh, man. But it looked terrible. Nim had come out. Yes. 1982. For, for three years. Yep, yes. Secret of Nim had come out. Um, Castle in the Sky is about to come out. Last unicorn was 1982. And then we fire have fire and ice is what I was yeah, thinking. Fire of. and ice, but also like you were like you were gonna say the Tolkien series yeah. of movies like Return yeah. of the King, The Hobbit, uh, Rock and Rule, Rock and Rule, which I've what never I was heard of. of. Yeah, Flights of the Dragons. So basically, we have a lot of we have two things like sci fi fantasy yep. and fucking metal. Yep. So like those like steampunk, like futuristic. Yeah. You know, I guess those aren't. I I picture like more like like Hera. Like uh, Conan the Barbarian, like like those posters where like yeah, it's a like, big like a Molly, like a Molly Hatchet poster. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to think of who the artist was that did a lot of those and was pretty renowned. Like he was super perverted and would draw like like what the girl really graphic the girl stuff. like clinging to his leg. Yeah, but no, but I'm talking That's about like nudity of. and the whole deal. Yeah, and like graphic violence, like fire and ice. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I have no so, idea yeah, what that is. You guys, the not black. not. Game of Thrones, fire and ice. Yeah, exactly. No, ice and fire is what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. Of. So yeah, the uh, the 25th fucking Disney feature, The Black Cauldron, <laughs> leaning heavily on heavy metal and fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. It's 80 minutes long. Yes, it is. Okay. Which doesn't really seem to be out of the norm. No. That's, I mean, that's pretty standard. Yeah, it's a normal movie length, average movie length. Yeah. So it's average. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm giving you an opportunity. No, I'm not. I'm not taking it. That's what she said. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> she never said. Okay, that. babe. The budget for this movie: forty-four million dollars. And how much did the last one cost? Like fifteen? Oh my god! Like that is unbelievable. Twelve? I think it That's was. That's unfucking believable. Yeah. Fox and the million. Hound was twelve. This cost almost million. four times as much as Fox and the Hound. Twelve million. And did it look as good? I don't know. We'll discuss it later. It's based on a series of books called The Chronicles of Pri- Prydain. Prydain, maybe. Yeah. By Lloyd Alexander. Um, so again, kind of these Tolkien esque. Esque. Or, uh, influenced. Yeah. I guess. Like there's, ugh, I don't even know what to call it. Just fantasy elements of like dragons and evil mm-hmm. monsters and you go on a journey yeah. and there's magical creatures. A lot of that. <laughs> um, this was the first animated film to be recorded in Dolby Stereo. All right. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Select surround sound. Okay. First Disney animated movie to receive a PG rating. Which is pretty significant. So up from a G. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First computer generated imagery to be used in an animated Disney film. So like bubbles and smoke yeah, and stuff like and that. Fire. Her orb that yep. she has, the yep. girl has in the movie. There are no songs. That was very apparent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's like, and I a, didn't think, I, I mean, this is for later, obviously. I don't think it was a bad thing. There is an orchestrated track, and yep. I guess the soundtrack to this movie is really highly regarded. I could see that. Yep. I could really see that. Yep. Yeah. And then 
the other thing that was different in this is they started using the animation photo process. And you're looking at me, so I'm going to read you what Wikipedia <laughs> says. The animation photo transfer process, APT, is a photographic transfer system that can photographically transfer lines or solid blocks of colors onto cell sheets. Okay. okay? So instead of painting the line art underneath yeah. or on the back of the cell, now this printer, it's almost like silk screening, can okay. just print it right onto the celluloid. Um, from what I've read, though, it's it doesn't – like it fades. It doesn't last very oh, okay. well. So I'm not sure. Um, it says that its main advantage is that coloring, normally done via back painting, yep. can be controlled better and multiple versions can be made quickly. To put it simply, the drawings are photographed and negatives are then processed onto cells instead of typical photography. So it's just another way of – um, doing the lines and adding color to them. Yeah. So a little more advanced than, a lot more advanced than xerography. This was used on Black Cauldron, Great Mouse Detective, Oliver and Company, and The Little Mermaid. Okay. So now we're getting to new technology. Maybe that's part of the 44 mil budget? Maybe. I don't know. But that's a, that's a big disparity. A huge fucking budget. God. So production notes on this. This story, the books were optioned in 1971. We have Ollie Johnson and Frank Thomas. Yeah. Those are two of the nine old men. They were convinced, like they wanted to convince the studio to make this movie. They said if it's done right, it could be as good as Snow White. That is really, really tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a really presumptuous thing. According to Slate.com, because I, I read a lot about this. Yeah. Studio chief Ron Miller at the time. He was Walt Disney's son-in-law. Yeah. He was worried that the young team of animators wasn't ready to tackle this movie yet, so he kept delaying production. Finally, though, Disney Studios decided to push ahead with Black Cauldron in 1981. Okay? Yeah. This was spurred on by, supposedly, uh, The Secret of Nim. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, competition's a bitch. So with Cauldron, Disney hoped to draw in teenagers bored of Disney fare like that darn cat back into the fold. Quote, no respectable teenager would be caught dead watching a Disney movie, Cauldron's producer Joe Hale had said. Employees used to joke that if Disney ever made a World War II movie, they'd probably call it that darn Hitler. <laughs> oh, I thought it was bed knobs on broomsticks. <laughs> so Disney has this reputation of being very kiddish. Which is fair. And, yeah. It's absolutely fair. So other things that That's were, what happens when you fucking don't kill off Chief in right? The Fox and the Hound. Should have killed off Chief? Yeah. Hashtag kill Chief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in 1982, there was an animator strike. So that's delaying production. Yeah. 1984, Ron Miller, so studio chief Ron Miller, was then replaced with Michael Eisner. That's his boy. Who handpicked Jeffrey Katzenberg as yeah. his chairman. We'll come back to this in the 90s. Will we? Yes, we will. <laughs> Neither of them cared about animation and considered doing away with the animation division. What the fuck? Yeah. Are you serious? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This will come back around in the 90s. Okay. Another part of the delay was that there's just so much source material. Yeah. There's like five books in this yeah, series. Yeah, it was, it was like a five-year period that they were made in the 60s. Yeah, and they said that there were like 30 different main characters or yeah. something. Like they just had so much to work Imagine with. Imagine condensing Game of Thrones into like an hour and a half movie. Into an animated Disney movie? That'd be the shit. That'd be <laughs> fucking awesome. I'm pretty sure if you Google like Game of Thrones. Your Disney- name is Reek! <laughs> <laughs> uh I'm pretty sure if you Google Game of Thrones Disney, it's like people have turned the characters yeah, into Disney characters. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, so yeah, so this movie started the idea in 1971, came out in 1985. Yeah, that's how long. This that's, that's that's a long yeah. chasm, guys. During production, uh, Tim Burton had done some character work, some character design. His shit was tossed out. I would like to see what that looked like. I know. Because I could totally see Tim Burton's style with something in that vein. Mm-hmm. I mean, not not necessarily with what it turned out as, but... Yeah. Uh, instead, they went with Milt Kahl. Kale? Yeah, he, the, the one that uh, was a big driving force between or uh, behind Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, he worked on a lot of... Well, I mean, he worked on yeah, S- yeah, yeah. Snow White and all the old movies. Sometime during the making of this, too, John Lasseter was let go. Because he was more getting into the CGI stuff, I yeah. think. And his project never came to fruition, so I think they were just kind of like, we're letting you go. Yeah. So I don't know how much he worked on this. I just know during this time period, he was let go. Okay. 
Well, yeah, it seems like they're making winning decisions was, already, so. That was the first time they let John Lasseter go. Oh! <laughs> uh, they also did some test screenings of this movie. It was too scary for children. Yeah. So scary that these kids, like, ran out of the theater. <laughs> that was, like, the cauldron born scene where stuff's coming well, out see, of the cauldron. Well, see, I feel like this is a situation where if you're trying to cater to teenage, you can't really have it both ways. Right. You know? I mean, maybe, maybe you can nowadays because they've kind of perfected the formula. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you can't. I mean, unless you have, like, Secret of Nim, where there's so much cutesy stuff that you can kind of combine the two. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I believe in Josh, DM me if I'm wrong about this. Um, <laughs> Slide in. Michael Eisner or Jeffrey Katzenberg is the reason Disney, did they buy Miramax? Because Disney had no rated R movies yeah. until they bought Miramax. Mm, I don't know. I'll, you and I don't know that. I'll so double check sure. on that. I'm pretty sure Jeffrey Katzenberg is the reason like Disney overall parent company studios had a rated R movie. Yeah. yeah. I'll look into that later. After that test screen was done... And the kids reacted poorly. <laughs> the, the cats. And parents weren't happy. Jeffrey Katzenberg, who's a piece of shit. Whoa. He's the new studio chairman. He wanted some scenes cut. Yeah. He's like, this is too scary. This movie sucks. We need to do something about this. Producer Joel Hale was like, no. He told him these, like, when you make an animated movie. Yeah. You do storyboarding, and that's the stage when you do edits and cuts and you rework the story. Yeah. So, like, it's done. It's animated. Yep. You can't have outtakes with yeah. animation. <laughs> Katz- Whoops. Katzenberg didn't care. He called for all the animation reel to come up, and he edited it in the edit room anyway. The story goes that he already had edited, like, two minutes of film Yeah. by the time... That Joe Hale went to Michael Eisner and was like, you need to stop him. Yeah. So Michael Eisner comes, he tells him to stop, and then Katzenberg insists that they have to rework it, which they did, yeah. and cut out 12 minutes. Holy shit! And delayed the movie seven to eight months. 12 minutes of animation. Think of how many thousands of cells they had yeah. already drawn and put into production. And all the work that those fucking people put in. Maybe pay attention while the shit is going on, you fucking idiot. Yeah, isn't that insane? So that was, like, the big product. Like, yeah. It was a fucking... It was yeah, a, that's a snafu. It was a... What do you call it? Fuster cluck? <laughs> <laughs> Fluster cluck? Yeah, fluster cluck, yeah. <laughs> All right, so now let's give the story of the Black Cauldron. Yes. Ready. <laughs> we'll paint the picture for you, guys. This is a VHS tape. This VHS tape. Yeah, it, it's like... It, it looks like one of those early, uh, mid-90s Marvel cards with, like, the embossed foil... Yeah. Or, like, or like a variant cover. I was going to say a Magic the Gathering card. Whoa. With foil. Whoa. It doesn't look that fucking sh- <laughs> <laughs> It's so shiny. Yeah. Like it's all, like it, they almost looked washed out. To me, it looks cheap. It does. And, and even when you open the case for this, I don't know if it's just the specific VHS that we got, but it feels cheap. The whole thing. Well, and I said to you, even though it was wrapped in plastic when we got it, thanks, Josh. He got it to us. Yeah. <laughs> like unused. Um, I was like, this feels almost like a knockoff, a knockoff because the clamshell case feels different. weird. Yeah. yeah, it's different. I mean, it's not a knockoff, but it's really shiny. Yeah. <laughs> Very shiny. So we have a couple previews. One is for A Bug's Life, which is, as we know, Pixar's. Best, best movie. For- forgettable yeah. movie. No, it's, it's, it's their best movie. So You've never say. even seen it. <laughs> it's got Kevin Spacey in it, so it's got to be great. Ants. Speaking of, Ants is on Hulu right now, and we should totally watch it. I don't care. This is a fucking Disney podcast. Ants has nothing I to- feel like we need to compare Ants and Bugs Life. No! Anyway, <laughs> we also have... Meet the Deedles! Paul Walker, rest in peace, boys. <laughs> What the fuck is Meet the Deedles? It was like, know. I like that the review snippet that it had, which you know they took out of context. A modern day Bill and Ted's. Oh my God. I told you it reminded me of like a Polly Shore movie. Yeah. Like maybe this was like the height of the mid 90s or something. I don't know. It probably was. Yeah. yeah. Well, this came out in 98, the VHS. That is the height of the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> Polly Sh- Really? Polly Sh- I thought he- I had- picture him like early 90s. Well, I mean, he was in the early 90s as well, but it was throughout. Because, yeah. I mean, like, Encino Man was going on. True. And Son-in-Law. True. We also have a direct-to-video cassette, which yeah. I didn't know was a thing. That's what they're called. It's just weird to hear, like, you hear, like, direct-to-video. Yeah. Like, and hearing the whole word video cassette was just funny to me. 
direct to video cassette, we have Pocahontas 2. Yeah. And Lion King 2. Which I'm sure are phenomenal. Winners, both of them. <laughs> Total winners. Okay. Let's get into this, babe. Let's do some yeah. serious business. Get down to business. <laughs> Legend has it. Let's climb into the cauldron because you're going to want to. <laughs> Legend has it. That's how it starts. There's a narrator. Legend has it, you guys. Like the movie Legend? No. <laughs> It's just, it starts off black. Yeah. And it's kind of panning into some darkness. Yeah. Legend has it, blah, 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 something about an evil person. And he was... It's a demon. Demon. It was melted down into molten lead and iron. Yeah. And made into a cauldron. Made into a cauldron. Yeah. And whoever could control this cauldron can make like an army of the undead and fucking... rule the world. Rule the world! Okay. Stop us if you've heard this before. That's what's going on, you guys, is... Putting fucking some evil guy in like carbonite or whatever. What? Yeah. Okay. And they wanted this to be fucking. For teenagers? Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. <laughs> we have a multi plane shot. So that was dark. Now, now we're getting to the, the lightness of it. The multi plane shot that moves into a fairy tale esque village cottage? Yeah. Cottage. Yeah, cottage, I would it's say. It's got like a thatch roof. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, inside we have. Some guy, some old guy. He's like a wizard. Uh, yeah. He's something. In that vein, yeah. Yeah. It so, reminded me very much of Willow, but obviously this predates that, so. Yeah. Um, and then we have the boy whose name I don't even know. <laughs> Honestly, when I looked at the credits of this movie, the only person who I knew was John Hurt. Every single other voice actor, I have no idea who the fuck. They're these all are. British. Yeah, that's, that's well. I mean, part no, of it. but like, you know me, I know names usually. Oh, you I'm, do. I'm usually very good with that kind of stuff, and I know none of these people. Nigel Hawthorne kind of sounds uh, familiar, but John Hurt is is the only one. Yeah. So the Willow S guy, I'm trying to think of what his name is. I don't even know. <laughs> this is bad. Um, where is the synopsis? Dalbin. Dalbin. Kyer Dalbin. This is all from like a, not Welsh. Is Welsh what I'm thinking of? Maybe. Yeah, Welsh mythology. So that's why their names are unfamiliar to yeah. us. Okay. So the boy's name is Taryn. And Taryn thinks he's going to be a great warrior someday. I mean, he's probably, he's probably right. Yeah. But for the time being, he's a pig's keeper. Yeah. Take, <laughs> so, her, take care of that pig boy. So a pig's keeper warrior. I mean, who's, who's counting here? The pig, by the way, whose name is Hen. Den? I think it's like Henwin or something like that. Henwin. You're right. Henwin. Oh, I just I just called her Pretty Pig. <laughs> At this time, I didn't know if it was like the Dolby stereo, but I felt like the voice was voices were kind of hard to hear. Like it wasn't clear. A little bit, yeah. I'm sure part of that is our sound setup because we don't have like surround stereo because we're not rich. Oh, true. We're not rich. This could also just be bad uh, mixing. Sound mixing. That's, yeah. that's kind of where I, I was thinking. But I mean, I if you're thinking. spending 44 milli... It better be good. <laughs> so basically, we have this age-old story of a wimpy kid who wants to be a war hero. Yeah. Okay? We've never and seen has, that before. And, and has this old-ass mentor who, yeah, is trying to kind of hold him down a little bit, hold him back because he knows he's not ready yet. And there's a cute little sidekick who's yeah. the pig. Well, he's giving this pig a bath. Yeah. Taryn is. And suddenly, the pig, like, freaks out. Yeah. He starts squealing and tries to get out of the bathtub. And the old guy comes out and is like, what's going on? And Taryn's telling him that this pig's freaking out. And he's like, bring her in right away. Well, this pig happens to be on an oracular pig. <laughs> yeah. As an oracle. Yeah. Yeah, like, can, can see the future. So he knows something's going on. The old, the old guy knows something's going on. So he has the pig look into like a basin of water. Yeah. Yeah. So that he, kinda, he, he does like a chant. He stirs it with his cane. And has the pig look into the water, like put its snout in. Mm -hmm. And when it looks into the water, it gets like these, uh, ka eyes, like when he's trying to hypnotize somebody, yeah. like it's getting high. And then the visions start and the water changes. It starts to swirl. Yeah. And, and then they see all these, these. You see the vision in the water. Yeah. Basically what's happening is there's this guy named the Horn King, cause there's a war going on, I guess. And the Horn King is searching for the cauldron. And the old guy's reaction to this is, Quick, Taryn, kid who is never going to yeah. be a warrior, why don't you take this pig and journey well, off into some hidden... He, he says this because they see the pig in the vision. So he knows that somehow the Horn King can see this as well. 
and he knows about the pig. So he's going to look for it, and that's going to be his vessel to find the Black Cauldron. Yeah. I have some plot hole things about that. Do you? Oh, well, uh, how does he see the pig? I don't know. I just uh, If he can see the pig, why can't he see the Black Cauldron? I don't know. Anyway, he wants this pig. So the old guy's like, dude, Taryn, take this pig, go on a journey to some hidden cottage, and uh, just hang out there. Yeah. So, so, so he can't find her. Yeah. So the kid is pretty excited to do this because he wants to be important. And then we get to see the Horn King. Basically, yeah. we cut to his lair. Yeah, it's his castle, and we meet Skeletor. Come on, and uh, that is not fair. No, because seriously, what what I was thinking when this when this started is number one, the music is fucking great. It's a very it's very menacing, and you kind of get like a a wraparound shot of him. You don't see him immediately, and it kind of disappointed me because I thought. Initially, what they were going to do was like the E.T. type of thing from, from that day, where you would only see the uh, the feet mm-hmm. of the antagonist, and you wouldn't ever actually see their face until like the end. Yeah. But they showed them almost right away. And I, I was kind of like thinking, is this guy like wearing a mask, or is he some sort of like goblin, or, or what the deal is? But uh, when, when he actually started talking and kind of you know just saying what the deal is, I thought, fuck, man. That's really menacing. Like this it's really is really scary. This is good. Yeah, he's scary for a kids movie. Yeah, but yeah. So he's kind of surrounded by like all of these skeletons. Yeah, you just you don't know what he's going to do with them yet. But he needs the black cauldron. Yeah. I think you can you can venture a guess. Yeah. So now we go back to Taryn and Henwin. He has her on a leash, and he's like, "Don't worry, I'm going to take good care of you." <laughs> And then they look into a pond, and he sees his reflection, and so he imagines himself as this great hero. He's a knight. All because, you know, he saved this pig. Mm -hmm. Well, this kid's fucking useless. (laughs) As he's daydreaming, the pig gets away. Yeah. You just started on this journey. Kid, you had one job. It's a sneaky pig, man. One job. And he already fucked it up. So he goes to look for her, and as he does this, he comes across a creature yeah thing i don't even know what i was struggling what to describe it as his name is gurgi 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 uh gurgi i think gurgi gurgi he's like a dog monkey yeah i don't know yeah he it looks like a really really furry monkey like think of like a uh a miniature yeti a, (laughs) a miniature yeti with a super broomy alfred einstein mustache yeah, I think I referred to him as Mustache Dog. Yes. <laughs> mustache Dog. Mustache. Mini Mustache Yeti. With, like, uh, opposable thumbs. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so this we, is all very scientific. Yeah. So we have him. His name is Gurgi. Ger- yeah. So Gurgi is trying to steal this apple that Taryn has for the pig. And they kind of fight over this. And mm-hmm. he's he has the apple. And Taryn is holding a stick. And he's like, give me he's back that apple. Him. But he's such a, like... Like, he keeps threatening him, but he doesn't follow through. Yeah. So he's, oh my god, that kid's such a wimp. <laughs> anyway, eventually they hear, like, the pig squealing, and they both run off after her, and they there's dragons now. Yeah. And the dragons are swooping down, trying to get the pig, and they do. So there's a really great animation going on with, like, the pig running towards the yeah, camera yeah, yeah. as the dragons are swooping on, and it looks really Or great. doing, like, a first-person view from the dragon's eyes chasing the pig down. Yeah. It's, and, like, just the grass blowing and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome, and it that itself reminds me of a Don Bluth movie. Yeah. I, I, I guess I could see Which that. Which is funny, because... And the dragons look like miniature versions of the uh, uh, Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty mm-hmm. when she transforms. Which I was going to say, I feel like there's a lot of Don Bluthiness to this, even though he didn't work on this movie. Well, I think, it, especially if they were trying to compete with something like Secret of Nim, it probably drew a lot True. of inspiration, and they they probably worked a lot of stuff around. They, and and it even had like a the look of it had like a dragon's lair kind of feel, yeah. which would make sense as well. Well, and this so they started the work in what 1971. Yes. Nim came out in eighty two. This movie came out and in eighty five. La- Dragon's Lair came out in eighty three as well. So. so they are probably they probably had a whole bunch of work done yeah. and then rushed to like suddenly change the look of it. And that's probably what a lot of the budget was. They probably just went through so many different things to mm-hmm. try and get this thing done and made <laughs> that yeah, it just I, jacked I the cost that. up. So the dragons take off with Henwen and they go to Mordor. <laughs> 
I mean, she was such a piece of shit. We have Skeletor. Uh-huh. We have Mordor. We have Luke Skywalker. Uh-huh. I don't know. So now we have Taryn kind of sneaking, mm-hmm. sneak, sneaking into that castle. <laughs> and he comes upon the like henchmen who are drinking. And is this a bar? But then there's like a really large woman yeah. dancing on a table. She's so getting it done. There's a strip club. Like what is like, going on? Yeah. The dude is hitting on her hard. Like she's got massive jugs. That are, like, falling Kevin, out. Kevin approves. Uh-huh. And they're all having a good time until the Horn King arrives. Yeah, he, he always has to ruin the party. He does, yeah. He could join them, but I don't know. It's not about I that. I don't really like to party with my boss. Yeah, he, he, he wanted to just go chill back in his room with his <laughs> goblin. <laughs> yeah, there's this little goblin guy. He's, like, green and kind of crawls around, mm-hmm. kind of like a schmingle. Uh, Gollum? I mean, yeah, he crawls around like that, but the character himself is just like a sniveling little lackey asshole. Yeah. So we have he has the pig. The the pig is his prisoner, and they're asking her like, "Where is the black cauldron?" Show and, us. Yeah, and basically they waterboard her, <laughs> and they're gonna like torture her. Yeah. That's when uh, Taryn falls in. Yeah, and because he was watching from above. And they're going to kill him, but then they're like, oh, this is the keeper of the oracular pig. And so they're going to use him to get it out of um, Henwin. Henwin. Except he's like, I promised I wouldn't tell. And they're like, okay, guess, guess we don't need the pig then. <laughs> and they and they're going to go chop her head off. <laughs> like They take her to the chopping block. The executioner is there with the axe. And he like brings it up. And the guy's like, no, 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 no. Oh, well, that was easy enough. Yeah. He gave in pretty fast. Yeah. So they reveal where the black cauldron is. Or no, she's starting to. And then they like splash the water. Yeah, she's basically just verifying that it's existing. Yeah, yeah. But like, did she somehow like magically heat up the water because they splashed it on them and it was like steaming or boiling? No, and I that's think, when it, they no, ran. It, just, it just splashed on uh, the Horn King's face, oh. and I'm assuming maybe he's like a fucking demon or something like yeah. that. So I don't know, <laughs> like the Wicked Witch of yeah, the West. Exactly. <laughs> oh, the fucking melting! Movie's over. Yeah, so they run and they're trying to escape, and he gets to like the top of a tower, and there's nowhere else to go, so he just throws her over, yeah. and he's like, "Swim, Henwin!" <laughs> so he gets captured and put in the dungeon. That's right. He, like, he, they're playing, like, the recording or the audio of when the old guy was like, take care of this yeah. pig, blah, blah, blah. I'm such a fucking failure. Yeah, you're f- feeling pretty stupid now, aren't you, boy? <laughs> um, so, randomly, a girl appears from the floor. Yeah. Yeah. She, like, uh, turns one of the stones up or something like that. It looks like a, a hatch. Yeah. And she is a princess who has been locked up because she has this, like, orb that floats around with mm-hmm. her. It's like a glowing orb. looks like a wisp. Yeah. And so the Horn King thought that maybe that could tell him where the cauldron was, but it didn't work out. So she's trying to escape, and she asked Taryn if he wants to escape with her. And he's the, like, sure. The security at this castle is fucking dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe, maybe that's why he wants to uh, raise all these dead. Probably. <laughs> Tighten the place up a little bit. So I've noticed at this point that her mouth doesn't match when she's speaking. Really? <laughs> Did you didn't catch that? No. Oh my god, it's pretty bad. Um, I think part of uh cutting out time is they skipped cells. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. Thanks, uh, cats. <laughs> so they're trying to escape, and there's a kind of a ruckus because the henchmen have caught. Another trespasser? Yeah, a minstrel. He's a, a bard. His name is Fluter Flam. <laughs> and I thought they were calling him Fluter yeah. throughout this whole movie because he's a musician. Yeah, like, like a it's a flute. flute. Yeah. Except that he plays a harp. <laughs> Which his harp breaks, str- keeps breaking strings. Is it because like because when- he's lying? He's lying. It's it's lying harp. Lying. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah. So at first I was like, what's the point of this guy? Because they try- that's it. That's the point right there. Is he's comic relief. That's it. Yeah. So he because they go to like help him escape, but then they have help like undo one of his hands. Yeah. And then the henchmen come and they're like, <laughs> bye. Fine. We're bailing. Yeah. So I was like, oh. Okay, then. They're just going to leave him to die. <laughs> but he gets himself loose. They end up in, what do you call those, like a burial chamber? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where there's like an old king's tomb or whatever, Mm -hmm. and there's a sword there, so Taryn grabs the sword. It starts glowing. It's like a magic sword. Yeah, just randomly. This is where the CGI comes in. Yeah. They're like using these special effects. And so they're still trying to escape the castle, and the useless pig boy drops the sword at some point. It's the only weapon you have. You'd think you'd take care of it. Um, but then he gets it back, and someone swings at him with an axe. And yeah. when it hits the sword, the axe just falls apart. It like crumbles. Yeah. yeah. So now he's like Mr. Cocky because he's I'm got, fucking shit up. got this magic sword. Come, come get it. Yeah. And they end up going out into the courtyard or the, the outside area mm-hmm. where he uses the sword on the drawbridge mechanism, which drops the drawbridge. And then your boy Fluter comes running out as well, and they make it across the bridge, and that's that. Yeah. Okay? So now we're back to the castle with Skeletor and Green Goblin. (laughs) Okay? You're such a piece of shit. Green Goblin has to break the bad news to Skeletor that Luke Skywalker and Princess Aurora got away. Ah, (laughs) He-Man! Because this girl basically looks like a young Princess Aurora. Yes, that's why they brought Milk Cow on. Because they wanted to, I think, get that kind of look. Yeah, yeah. Because they didn't like the the character designs that Tim Burton had or whoever Gosh, else. yeah, I want to see those yeah. too. Because that's what I thought. I was like, yeah, she looks a lot like Princess Aurora. Mm-hmm. So Princess Aurora is stitching up Fluter's <laughs> pants because they got ripped by a yeah. dog. Yep. She's... Must have talked some shit to Taryn about his sword, because he's like, what do girls know about swords anyway? Well, she wasn't even talking shit about her. He, she was saying that the sword was pretty much doing the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, because he like, was what, trying to. Well, what were you doing? He was trying to act like he was a fucking hero. Yeah. But yeah. So he's like, what, what do girls know about swords anyway? And then in princess fashion, she stomps off to cry. It's well, probably what I would have done. Which solves problems. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so Pig Boy goes over there. And they kind of make up a little bit. They do a little sideways glance and bat their eyes at each other. And I think this is going to be a romance. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it has to be because it's a Disney movie. Yeah. (laughs) So this, at this point, Mustache Dog returns. Mustache Yeti. And uh, he sees pig tracks and he's trying to tell Taryn. Taryn's kind of a dick to him. Well, yeah, because he was a piece of shit. He was trying to steal his apple and, like, con him out of it. Like, he's not going to trust this guy. True. But he's trying to be nice. Yeah. So Mustache Dog. <laughs> Gurgy. Helps them track down the pig. Um, but they end up at this pond. And as Gurgy is jumping the rocks. Yeah. The he, rocks. Like, he hits a mechanism and it turns on like a whirlpool. And yeah. they all get sucked into it. And then we're in this underground layer of like fairies. Fairies. Or elves or it's something. It's so fucking random. Yeah. There's a name for them, but I don't care enough to look it up right now. <laughs> so... Yeah, they're like Smurfs, yeah. but all different glowy colors and with wings. Yeah. It's a little weird. Yeah. And there's like a group of kid ones who never come back around because the kids are like, oh, look what we did. Oh, mm-hmm. no, we're going to get in trouble. And then they never come back. I think when I was looking at the names of the kid actors, I think they were like children of animators or uh... of like a director or something like that because the names is like, well, they sucked. So that would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They do that. Yeah. Fucking nepotism. This is a huge sidetrack. But Judd Apatow's wife, Leslie Mann. Leslie Mann, correct. Apparently, she's in a new commercial with her own daughter. Okay. Have you seen it? I have not. It's so eye rolly. <laughs> oh, mom. Yeah. It's stupid. Okay. Just, I mean, kid, kids of actors. <laughs> uh, kids, kids of important people uh-huh. getting into college. That's right. That's how you do it. So I earned this. They meet these fairy elf smurf things. And they let it slip that, oh, there's a pig down here, too. (laughs) So that worked out. And the Fairy King also knows where the Black Cauldron is. Yeah, he just knows. Yeah. I feel like if this was really that uh, nefarious or deadly of a thing, you'd kind of keep that shit under wraps. Yeah, he just mentions it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know where it is. Yeah, no big deal. I'll send you there right away. Oh, you know the Horn King? Yeah, he's a great guy. To a place called Morva. Yeah. Morva. Yeah. (laughs) Morva. Um, did they, did he like transport them there or did they journey there? They journeyed there with, uh, the yellow fairy with the beard. Yeah. He sent a fairy with them to accompany them. Yes. Okay. They end up at this like creepy house. And, in, in a swamp. It's and, like a bog. Yeah. And they determine that no one lives there. So they break in. <laughs> Why not? That's why you get a security system, guys. <laughs> 
And uh, there's a whole bunch of frogs that are locked up there and a pile of cauldrons. Yeah. So, I mean, this is normal. I, yeah. You know, I wouldn't really think anything of it. It feels right. It yeah. feels right now. Right now. Um, Anybody want to cook? <laughs> and I noticed that uh, the princess's orb is back because it kind of comes and goes. Yeah. There's like no yeah. consistency with it. I expected that to be more of a thing in the movie. I don't know what it does. It glows. But why? What is it? To see. <laughs> yeah. I like your way, princess. Well, it turns out that this home belongs to some witches. Really? And this one of the witches is like totally in Dear Boy Fluter. Yeah. Like, and really she is also super duper busty and fucking spilling out of that action. <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> um, the other witch, because there's two of them, tries to turn Fluter no, into a frog. there's three witches. Oh, there's three? There's three of them, yes. I only assume like two of them are doing something. Jesus Christ, pay, pay attention. <laughs> I was paying attention. I was taking good notes. Uh-huh. So one of the witches turns Fluter into a frog. Yeah, because she wants to eat him. Yeah, and so the big big girl witch, big gal, is trying to save him. <laughs> and as he's a frog, he ends up in her cleavage. <laughs> that is not something I ever thought I would see in a Disney movie. Like he's trapped and trying to escape her cleavage. Holy frog cleavage, Disney. Yeah, she's like bouncing around yeah. and he's like smortified, stuck <laughs> inside her boobs. Like, oh my God. <laughs> Um, but hey, kids. <laughs> like, they're worried about the violence yeah. in this movie? What about them jugs? I, I, I don't what know. What about them jugs? Kids love milk? I don't know. <laughs> so, they, they, they tell the gang here that they can give you the cauldron, but they, they're barterers. Yeah, they basically. got a bargain. Yeah. You know, we got to make a deal here. They want Taryn's sword. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've, never, I've never seen one like it. Oh, it's so fancy. Yeah, because he's just chopping up cauldrons left and right. Yeah. And the, and the witches actually can't do anything with the black cauldron, and they know that. So she's kind of talking to her sisters like, oh, well, we'll just we'll just trade it for the sword because we can actually do something with that. But they won't be able to use the cauldron at all, so they'll just give it back. To, yeah. You know, two for nothing. Snake oil seals. I know, them. right? Okay. So. You thought you could trust a witch. Taryn is like, sure, have the sword. Okay. Uh, he didn't give it up that easily. Okay, but he gave it up. And here's the thing. You know that the Horn King is coming for the cauldron. And that sword is a really good weapon. So you're going to give up the only weapon you have that you're going to defend the cauldron with to get the cauldron. Well, I mean, if the Horn King gets there, you think that those witches are not going to barter with his ass? Probably. And he would probably have a lot more attractive stuff than they would if they're not going to give the sword up. True. Just saying. But I, I'm just saying to you. Can that, I interest you in a mustache yeti? <laughs> that was his only weapon, and he just treated it away. Yeah. Okay. So the but witches. He's got his real weapon. The witches tell them you can't destroy the cauldron. <laughs> it can't be destroyed. The only way to like I don't know do it in is someone has to sacrifice. Yeah. Himself. Somebody has to go inside the cauldron, but in doing that, you're never going to come out. Yeah. I don't know how that works. <laughs> How, how does that destroy the cauldron? Huh? Nothing. Never mind. <laughs> I, I can't. Suspension of disbelief. You're a monster. Okay. It's they're, a fucking fantasy movie. They're around a campfire. Yeah. And they're hanging out. And I think a romance is about to happen. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the gang all arrives. And uh, that damn Skeletor, he's just cutting Taryn deep. Why? Know? He's talking shit to him. <laughs> he's like, oh, here's a, a pig babysitter or whatever you call him. What do you call him? What? A, p- a pig assistant. Oh, pig keeper. Yeah, yeah. yeah, pig keeper. Pig keeper. And then he calls the princess a scullery maid. <laughs> so was she actually a princess? I think so. Yeah. I mean, who who else would have a glowing orb? You don't just get that shit. True. But yeah, so they're there. They're pretty much um, fucked at this point because he gets the cauldron and he summons the cauldron born. And we miss out on a really great... Uh, <laughs> Some Indiana Jones and uh, fucking Raiders of the Lost Ark shit. Like face melting, yeah. body melting off the bones because Katzenberg won that cut. You son of a bitch. Yeah, we could have had that. <laughs> Apparently, if you listen close enough, you can hear where the sequence gets cut because there's like a cymbal crash. Yeah. And it gets cut off. Cut off oh, anyway. okay. Yeah. I was like trying to hear for it, but I, I couldn't decipher it. Yeah. Because basically the cauldron born come out. Yeah. And they file out and they're going to go. Yeah, they're ready to go do whatever the up. fuck the Horn King yeah. wants. Which is odd to me because they never really explain what it is that he 
is looking to accomplish with this army of dead. I mean, obviously conquer the world, I guess. But why? Like, why, why not? I, I, I want to know so much more. I guess I need to read these fucking books because yeah. yeah. I had one of them. I don't know where it went. Yeah. I'll, I'll get them for you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so mustache dog arrives and he starts untying them because mm-hmm. they're all tied up. Have we mentioned that he sounds like Gollum? <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. I said that to you, and you were like, "No, no, no, no." I'm, I, I, I meant like, look. I thought you meant he looks like Gollum. No. Yeah, he 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 does sound like Smeagol. Yeah, Smeagol or Gollum? Both. I thought one is good and one is bad. Well, Gollum is bad, but yeah, he, he sounds like Gollum. Okay. So Taryn is like the only way to make this all stop is if I jump into mm-hmm. the cauldron. So he, because they're like above on like a platform or mm-hmm. something, and the cauldron's below them. So he's like, I, I gotta do it, you guys. I'm gonna sacrifice myself. And Gergen's like, no, master. Like, don't do this. And I'm pretty much like, yeah, do this. <laughs> jump, jump into that cauldron. <laughs> Make yourself useful. <laughs> and instead- I wanna know why the Horn King is leaving this shit open. Like, if you have this all powerful weapon, why the fuck are you just gonna leave it alone? You know, like I can't answer these questions for you, but he ne- he needs better security. You have the army of the dead. Lock it down. <laughs> so Gergen's like, "No, I'll do it," and he basically commits suicide. He literally jumps off into to his the death. cauldron. Yep. And uh, is it that easy? Yeah. Yeah. So because what one happened? Of the scenes that we were spared, Gergi getting like torn apart <laughs> into the cauldron. No. Oh, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Would have been great if it was the pig boy. Uh, so what happens is the cauldron starts sucking everything back in. Yeah, and all and all the things that had come to life are now falling dead again. And Skeletor is like, "What the fuck's going on?" So he figures it out that Taryn probably did something, and he heads back. And Taryn's like holding on to a wall because yeah, on a, to a ring on the wall because the cauldron's sucking everything nearby in. And like, like it's space. It's sucking the skeleton guy in as well, the Horn King. Well, it wasn't even really sucking him in. Like, the Horn King kind of goes after Terran, and Terran just does this weak ass little kick, this double legged kick to get him off of him, and that gets him to like. In, into the uh, the gravitational pull of the but cauldron. Why isn't Terran in the gravitational pull? Well, that's why he's holding on to the ring. Not for a second, he was. I'm just saying. But yeah, and so he fucking gets sucked into the shit and like, and the fortress collapses. It is so anticlimactic. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a it's a pretty cool scene when yeah. when the uh, the Horn King kind of gets. I can't remember the guy's name from the Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Nazi guy whose face melts. Yeah, that same kind of thing happens to him, but to his whole body. So his whole entire fortress collapses, and you guys, it was that easy. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I like when he jumped into the cauldron. I was like, this can't be it. Yeah. No, it was. Yeah. So we cut now. To the witches who want the cauldron. <laughs> yeah. And, it's like, hey, you got no use for this fucking cauldron, right? Yeah. And so Fluter is like, well, we bargain. And so at first they're like, well, here's your sword. But they bargain to get Gurgi back. And uh, Gurgi's pretty much dead. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like, okay, well, here's your Gurgi. <laughs> um, but psych, he's not actually dead because he comes back to life. And then he pushes... Uh, tearing and the princess's face together so they kiss, which is really gross because <laughs> they're like kids and stuff. Matchmaker! And uh, it kind of zooms out to where you can tell that the old guy yeah. from the beginning is watching with, with the uh, oracular the beard- pig. Well, with the pig and the bearded fairy that showed them where the black cauldron was. Yeah. And- so it's like, wait a second. You fucking knew this the entire time? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. And he says, this old man, you did well, my boy. Right? And then we have end credits. Yeah. This is the first time we've had end credits since, I believe, Alice in Wonderland. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. The Black Cauldron. The Black Cauldron. <laughs> See, uh, the reception. It was 44 mil. Yeah. That so was- how much how much money did it make? It obviously made a ton because they're, they're banking on everything in the mid-80s. Domestically, it made 21.3 million. <laughs> This has been nicknamed the film that almost killed Disney. It did so bad, Kevin, that they didn't even release it on VHS after a theatrical run. This, this what? VHS that I hold in my hands did not get released until 1998. What? Yeah. That's 13 fucking years. Yeah. Nobody, like, I remember being a kid and seeing- I was like, what is the Black Cauldron? Anytime somebody yeah. would tell me, like, 
or would say there was like oh like like Fraggle Rock or something like, that? like what what is that or like the Dark Crystal yeah I think is what I would no, think I, of. I remember being a kid and seeing like a VHS preview for the Black Cauldron and I didn't even know what it was like nobody had ever heard of it yeah yeah it, it was beaten at the box office by the Care Bears movie twenty two point nine million and a re release of E T. Re-release, E-T's. which is a fucking amazing movie. Yeah. Don't, don't, yeah, I just I just talked about it earlier in this fucking <laughs> review. Uh, so Black Cauldron, however, was more successful in France, where it had three fucking million, France, man, three million seventy four thousand four hundred eighty one admissions, and it was the fifth most attended film of the year in France. France, what, what are we doing? What the fuck, France. Yeah, tor tor t o r dot com. Uh, Michael Eisner ordered animators to abandon their decades long process of developing a script from concept art and storyboards, and to use instead the more standard live action process of developing storyboards from a script. A process he hoped would bring the studio back to focusing on story. Yeah, he like both Michael Eisner and Jeffrey Katzenberg came from like film yeah. studios. So animation was not their thing. It's a different fucking medium. So they're saying this process, the way you've been doing it for decades, we're not doing it anymore. Um, now you need to work from a script. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not starting from scratch. You're working from a script. <laughs> yeah. Um, the animators were also moved after this movie from their really nice building that they worked in to a warehouse two miles away. Because <laughs> remember... Eisner and Katzenberg wanted to do away with the animation division. Yeah. They're like animation. We're gonna, we're gonna make this, the, isn't the future. We're gonna make this as untenable as possible. Yeah, yeah. God damn. And fucking hey, assholes, but man. Hey, hey, there's a video game. I'm sure it's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, as far as critics go, I'm oh. gonna let you read this one. I found this just for you. You read this <laughs> whole slide. Really? Okay. Roger Ebert loved the film, giving it three and a half out of four stars. <laughs> the best of the Disney animated features were not innocent children's entertainments, but blood-curdling stories of doom and obsession with a few smiles along the way, of course. They only looked innocent because they were cartoons. The great Disney cartoons contained all the fearsome possibilities of the grim fairy tales or, for that matter, of life itself. Only in recent years have the Disney feature cartoons grown pale and innocuous <laughs> as part of the general delusion that harmless means colorless. Now comes a new Disney animated film in the old tradition. The Black Cauldron is a rip-roaring tale of swords and sorcery, evil and revenge, magic and pluck and luck. By the end of The Black Cauldron, I was remembering, with something of a shock of nostalgia, the strength and utter storytelling conviction of the early Disney animators. The Black Cauldron is a return to the tradition. Yeah. Woo! I know that was a long one, you guys, but I felt like Kevin really could sell it. <laughs> I think um, I did okay. I mean, even on the back of the VHS, they have the quote, A rip-roaring tale of sword, sorcery, and magic. Roger Ebert. Raj, we trusted you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get in some real critics now. So, Walter, oh, fuck you. <laughs> Walter Goodman in the New York Times praised the animation and John Hurt's performance. Fuck yeah. But felt people old enough to recall their delight at earlier feature animations, no doubt burnished by memory, are not, of course, the audience at which the Black Cauldron is aimed. Nor, apparently, is it aimed at youngsters who have had a taste of more sophisticated animation of the Star Wars breed of movies. <laughs> Uh, London's Time Out magazine deemed it a major disappointment, adding the charm, characterization, and sheer good humor found in previous Disney efforts are sadly absent. So then we have Jeffrey Katzenberg, piece of shit, uh, the <laughs> then chairman of Walt Disney Studios. Uh, apparently he was dismayed by the product and the animators felt that it lacked the humor, pathos, and the fantasy which had been so strong in Lloyd Alexander's work. The story had been a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and it was heartbreaking to see such wonderful material wasted. It's fucking like five books in a goddamn hour and a half. But the author has given his, yeah, Lloyd, here's his opinion. Yeah, Lloyd Alexander. First, I have to say there's no resemblance between the movie and the book. Having said that, the movie in itself, purely as a movie, I found to be very enjoyable. I had fun watching it. What I would hope is that anyone who sees the movie would certainly enjoy it, but I'd also hope that they'd read the book. The book is quite different. It's a very powerful, very moving story, and I think people would find a lot more depth in the book, which is probably fair. Yeah, because I know when I had seen Howl's Moving Castle by Miyazaki that, well, at first I was like a huge fan of it. And then it made me want to read the book. 
And then I read the book, and I was like, holy shit, this movie sucks. <laughs> yeah. And I the, told you that. And I told you that. The book was so amazing. Yeah. Um, Stephanie is a big Diana Wynn Jones fan. Yeah. Or Diane. Better than J.K. Rowling. Whoa. What? Who said that? Um, so, I mean, this does make me want to go read the Pier- Puritan Pryden Chronicles. Yeah. Prudane. Yeah. Prudane. Yeah. So, yeah. I go first this week. Oh. God. I don't even know where to start. Uh, give it your best shot. Let's start at the beginning. Yeah, right? So, this movie is all over the place. It's a mess. Um, it starts off really dark and menacing, but then we switch to, like, the Seven Dwarfs Cottage. Mm-hmm. And the tone is just inconsistent. The characters, from what I've read, part of the problem is the animators were all in different departments and yeah. not working together. In a together. fucking warehouse. Like, connect... No, not yet. Oh, okay. They were in the warehouse yet. Okay. But they were in different departments, and they weren't communicating with each other. So you have one group of people who are doing the character designs for, like, the main characters, and then another group who's doing the character designs for the villains and another that's doing the character designs for the fairies and so they all look like they come from different movies Mm -hmm. like the style of animation is just it's not across the board they all look like the styles are different yeah some of the voice voices weren't syncing up with the animation and maybe that was just some cut cells that were happening but it was really apparent and really bad i i want musicals yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wanted a song, something to break up what was happening. They were you just, want to see the Horn King just belting out a tune? Not necessarily. <laughs> that would have been the shit. <laughs> that would have been really like Skeletor. <laughs> um, yeah. I just, oh man. I almost feel like, so they keep remaking live actions or making live actions of older movies. Yeah. I want them to do this one because I want to see it done right. Right. I really do feel like there's potential Yeah, that here. is how remakes should work. Yeah. I feel like there's potential here. There's just a lot of plot holes. Like, why are they doing this? Or, like, that was stupid. Like, the main character is really unlikable. The princess is out of nowhere. Fluter... Like, what is even the point of him? Comic relief. Yeah, but I think Mustache Dog is comic relief. You can have two of them, but yeah, that's I'm, I'm telling yeah. you, that's what it is. They just really seem to be cashing in or trying to cash in on Tolkien and Star Wars and heavy metal, both the music and the movie. Just like Dungeons and Dragons, like everything you think of in like the 1980s that nerds liked but was still cool fuck yourself they were just really reaching for that stuff though yeah which is weird that shit wasn't cool back in the day though no but nostalgia wise um yeah it was it was making money though yeah yeah doesn't mean it's cool no but it was making money and they knew where the money was (laughs) and they were trying to do it which is weird that they were doing a cash grab for that because it took almost 15 years for this movie to get made yeah so it was like that's why i said i wonder if part of the budget is They had a movie already, and then they scrapped it to make it more contemporary, and they had to pay people to do it. Like, I don't know. Because does the CGI cost that much? Right. Does this new cell animation process cost that much? Dolby. Yeah. And there's no huge stars in this like there was Mm. in the last movie to be taking up payroll. So I I don't know. This this movie was not the worst. I say, is it as bad as the reputation? Um, I don't know. It's pretty it's pretty bad, I yeah. think. I think it's a mess. Is it unwatchable? Not really. I just it was bad. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I'm gonna fall into some more mediocrity with this one. I didn't think it was nearly as bad as I'd heard. I think I went into into it with expectations that it was just gonna be a complete smoldering pile of shit. <laughs> and I don't think it was quite that. I can definitely see where a lot of the the changes had come in, like with Mil- Milt Kale and the character design, because a lot of that stuff is very apparent. We can see the influences with uh, the Don Bluth stuff and, you know, the secret in him and the competition, you know, that they were trying to contend with at the time. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think a lot of the same things that you said. And I hate that we're agreeing some more. I thought you were honestly going to like this movie. No, no. And and honestly, uh, when, it, when it first started, I was like, oh, I... I kind of might because there are elements of this that I think that I I do like. I I did like that there was no musicals. I know that that's like a that is a Disney staple, but it's just not my thing really. So you know to not to not have that it's not a big deal to me. I thought that John Hurt was fucking 
excellent. The Horn King, for, for his part and the music were great, but they just, they used him the wrong way. The main character sucked. The princess was just, she was just there to be there for what that was supposed to be. There was no depth to the character. There was no, nothing that moved it along. Cause I was kind of hoping she was going to be like her own girl kind of thing. Cause mm-hmm. that's kind of what, what it was at the start, but it just devolved. And you know, uh, the, the bard, he was just comic relief. That's all it was. You could take him or leave him. The only thing he did was just the bartering at the end with the witches. And that was it. Um, you could really take him out of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't like the, uh, the fairy stuff. I thought that was really stupid. Um, so random. Too. Yeah, yeah, and that was like you said. There was a lot of a lot of jumping around really quickly and un- unnecessarily. So I, yeah, I I think it was it was pretty messy overall, and there wasn't enough stuff that I loved to make up for the stuff that was just you know it was either average or worse. And there just yeah there there wasn't enough to overcome that. So yeah, this just it's not a good movie. I'm. I'm kind of curious when I look at my list to see where I'm going to put it. But yeah, not, not, maybe not as bad as you've heard. It probably shouldn't have waited 14 fucking years to get a VHS release, but it's just, it's just not good. It could have been much better. Well, and when you have like two of the nine old men being like, if this is done right, this could be pretty great. And they just really just didn't do it right. Like, yeah. Yeah. So now I really want to read the books yeah. and see, because Lloyd Alexander, like, that's a name I recognize. Mm-hmm. Like, he's definitely a renowned author, and I want to see what it's all about. Yeah. All right. Well, I reviewed first, which means that Kevin does oh. rankings. All right. First. Oh, boy. God. I can't. I cannot in good conscience put this ahead of Fantasia. <laughs> um, Man. I am going to say... Honestly, I'm probably going to put this ahead of victory through air power, mm-hmm. but just behind the reluctant dragon. So it's going to be number 24 for me. Uh, that means it's better than Winnie the Pooh. It's better than Song of the South and Bed Knobs and Broomsticks and Alice in Wonderland. So fuck you if you think differently. Um, but yeah, I, I think that the, the Horn King and the music alone are good enough to put it above those movies. But outside of that, like I said, I can't, I cannot. I cannot put this ahead of Fantasia. No. Like, even even as much as we dislike Fantasia in the early going, mm-hmm. there's no fucking way. I know exactly where this is going. It's not going ahead of, a, of Fantasia. <laughs> it's not going ahead of Winnie the Pooh, because I would rather watch Winnie the Pooh, because at least there is that nice moment at the end with True. Christopher Robin and That's Pooh. It's going to go behind Song of the South. Woo! Worse than racism. Kevin, Song of the South... <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> oh my god! I think Song of the South had some catchy songs, yeah, and it did. Um, had a better story. And you liked Uncle Remus? Yeah, he was a more charismatic yes. main character than fucking Taron. Yeah, even Bobby Driscoll's character. Yeah, that's better. Um, so that means I'm putting it at thirty, which is behind Song of the South, but ahead of Bed Knobs and Broomsticks and Alice in Wonderland, because that's how much I hate Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> yeah. So go the Black Cauldron, boys. It was. It, was, I, I it think, was a movie. I think it was worse than mediocre. I think you're being too light on it. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you say that we agree, but I don't think we agree. Well, we kind of do. I, I, well, what I'm saying is, if you're spending forty four fucking million dollars for mediocrity or worse, that's really, really bad. <laughs> yeah, forty forty four million in eighty in nineteen eighty five dollars on an animated movie. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so that was a disaster. You guys ready for a a palate cleanser next week? (laughs) Next week we have The Great Mouse Detective and and a Donald Shore, our favorite. I'm so shocked. Donald's ostrich. There's a lot of fucking Donald Shorts. We know that, though. Wow. You guys, if you could tell all your friends and your enemies (laughs) and subscribe, rate, and review... Thank you to the anonymous person who just gave us a four-star review on oh, wow. iTunes. I appreciate that. Super legit. Um, you can tweet us at DTB Disney. You can Instagram us. Is there a verb for Instagram? Just uh, Instagramming? Yeah, just Instagram us. Hit us with a gram, bruh. At DTB Disney. We're on Facebook. 
And now you can find DTB Disney on YouTube, new episodes, and I'm slowly getting the old ones on there, too. Yes. I'm really disappointed. I'm sorry. I don't know what you were expecting. I don't know what I was expecting, but it's just... <sighs> the shiny case just got gotcha. you. It's just really disappointing. <laughs> Disney, I expect better from you. <laughs> And so did everybody else Instead, in the 80s. Instead, you're giving me Jeffrey Katzenberg, <laughs> who's going to go on to make DreamWorks and Shrek. <laughs> God damn it. Kevin, close this shit down. This is our business. Our business. It was good, but it's, it's good. See you there. <laughs>